Hi everyone, today I want to talk about four things that you can do as a physics teacher to really make your lessons effective and help your students to understand and learn physics in the best way possible. Uh, what I want to say is learning physics and being a good physics teacher makes a huge difference. I feel that in many subjects or a few subjects there are things being a good or a bad teacher doesn't affect the student that much. They can kind of learn on their own or they can figure things out and it's not as obvious if someone is a good or a bad teacher in like maybe history or different kinds of things. However, in something like physics, it's very obvious and there are clear things you can do as a physics teacher to really help the students out to help them learn the material. The first two things I'm gonna be talking about are very practical, but the two other things that I'm gonna talk about are more maybe fluffy, but I think even more important than the first two. So the first thing that I wanna talk about to really help out the students and to be good at as a teacher is to really give the students their time to do the work. So this is number one. I feel like students are so used to just like looking at the PowerPoint and just copying down what's written, not really even knowing what they're copying down. They're just like mindlessly writing down what's on the board and it doesn't even go into, they don't really have much thought about it. But physics is just so important to understand that they can't just be mindlessly copying things down. So as a physics teacher, when you give an example problem, you have to allow them as much as possible to figure out the problem for themselves as much as possible. If you're just doing the problem on the board and they're just copying it, there's very little that they're gonna get. Make sure they're able to do as much as they can on their own. If they need hints or if you wanna give them another step, but make sure as much as possible they're working on it on their own. The second thing that's really important to do is to really organize and simplify the problem for the students. So, so many physics problems are like word problems. They're pretty much all word problems. And you see all these variables, you see all these numbers and all these words. And students get many times very confused where to start, what's important, uh, there are all these equations, which equation do I use? And it's easy to get, become very flustered through the whole experience. So as a teacher, it's extremely important to break down the material for the students as much as possible and to help them organize and interpret the word problem in front of them. I still remember in college, we would be doing a projectile motion problem and there's all this information and it just looks like absolutely chaotic, no idea what to do. But there's so many ways, if you look at certain kinds of example problems, of breaking it down, helping students to go step by step by step to solve a problem. And I'm gonna show an example of how you can do this with a projectile motion problem. Okay, let's look at this example. A ball is launched from horizontally from the top of a cliff 80 meters high with a speed of 20 meters per second. What is the horizontal distance traveled by the ball right before it strikes the ground? So something you could ask them at the beginning is underline all the important information. So they should be underlining something like 80 meters, speed of 20 meters per second, what is the horizontal distance traveled, launched horizontally. Next thing that you could break things down is draw the picture. So you could ask them to draw the picture. So it's like, all right, they're on a cliff, 80 meters high. We have a ball that's launched horizontally, 20 meters per second. And what we're looking for is the horizontal displacement. So we've broken it down. We haven't done any physics or math, but we've broken this down a great way for them. Another thing we could ask them is, okay, we know that the everything in the X doesn't affect everything in the Y. So what are some things we know in the X direction and that's some things that we know in the Y direction? So you break it down for them again, another step. So we know that the acceleration in the X direction is zero. Acceleration in the Y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or I'm gonna put negative 10 meters per second squared. Depends what you're using. We know it's launched horizontally, so the velocity in the X direction is 20 meters per second. We know that this ball is going to be falling down in the y direction, 80 meters. So we can say displacement of y negative 80 meters. Uh, and what we're looking for is this displacement in the x direction. And then lastly, what we know, and this might be a little tricky, is we, need, we know that the initial velocity in the y direction is zero because it's launched horizontally. At this point, we could tell them, remember, we could only, oh, not question mark, zero. We could only find more information once we have three pieces of information. So we're trying to find this displacement, but we only have two pieces of information. So we have three pieces of information here. So what can we find over here that'll help us to find this? And then they should know that time is the only thing that 
belongs on both sides of the x and y so we can find time and then we can find help it'll help us to find displacement so now that we have four variables we look at our equation sheet and see okay what equation has all four of these they look at their equation sheet and see oh, okay this equation now has it i'm not going to do the rest here but they can kind of go step by step this way everything is broken down for them if you were to just look at this problem and just say go it's so confusing but once you've broken out the steps you know underlying important information draw a picture break things down to x and y it gives them steps even when they're confused at the beginning of i have no idea where to start i have no idea where to go it gives them steps of where they can go next and it simplifies the problem for them. the third point that i want to talk about is probably my favorite point and even though it's kind of vague and kind of general it's it's what i love to do as a teacher and that is to really get a hook for the students and get them really excited about the topic they're going to learn. And, I mean, it's no, it's no secret. If students are interested in a topic, they're gonna to be more motivated to learn, they're gonna be more motivated to do better on the topic. So I make sure before I start any chapter, the first day of that chapter is the most exciting day probably of anything we'll do in the whole chapter. So I make sure, for example, if we're learning about momentum and we're learning about collisions and things like that, like, all right, get on top of your desk, jump off your desk. How do you notice the difference when you bend your legs and when you don't bend your legs? Or like, hey, let's watch this video of these two cars crashing and let's see what happens. We're watching great videos, we're watching, de we're doing demos. And even uh, during that time, you know, with momentum, I, ha I go outside and we I fill up water balloons and we do a water balloon toss. And we look at the people who are really good at water balloon tosses and see what are they doing special that other people aren't doing. We do all these kind of fun demos so they get excited about the chapter so the next time they come to learn about momentum and we're doing more boring things like example problems, they're more interested in it because they got this hook of, oh, this is momentum, this is impulse, and they want to learn more about it. So getting that hook in from that first chapter, from that first lesson of the chapter is extremely important. The fourth point that I wanna talk about is similar to the third point, and it's another thing that I love as a physics teacher, but it's really making the science and making the physics something that the students care about and see that's important. I still remember when I had this student, we were doing this projectile motion lab where students had to guess where this ball would land once it rolls off the table. And I still remember he told me at the end of that lesson, Mr. Burns, that was like magic. I felt like what we just did in class was magic. We just were able to predict exactly where something was gonna land just through our math and calculations. And that's what you want people, students to do. When they're doing labs, you want it to be this experience of like, wow, science is real. Like, wow, I have the power to predict the future with science. And you wanna make these labs that they do, not just like something they just like follow instructions or do, but make it real. Make it seem like something important and significant. These points are something that's important in life to know about. So they don't just kind of brush it off as just some random material, but they see the significance in the learning that they're doing. So make, make your labs magical, make your activities la magical, and make them see how, it's, how real it is. So those are my tips to really help students to learn physics and get them excited about it, but just help them learn in a more practical manner. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.